Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Whoa, whoa, where are you guys going? Hey. Hey, come back. No, I'm just putting my desk down. It's a standing desk. It's very convenient, actually, when you want to sit down and stand up without having to rearrange your whole office. My friends, welcome to Wake Up Legendary. My name's Dave Sharp. I'll be your host this morning. And uh, I don't have a guest. I don't have a guest this morning. Is legendary marketer in Trump? Are we... Is there something wrong? Have we run out of success stories? Have we run out of successful clients? Legendary marketer has finally hit a wall in which we have no more successful clients to interview for you. And now we must go out and find some gurus to bring in. So the team is looking to book Tony Robbins. Some of these. Are, eh, just joking. Our guest didn't show up this morning. That, that's all that ha our guest didn't show up this morning. That's OK. Maybe our guest had some sort of an emergency. We didn't hear from him this morning. And so we were left with the same choice that we have had several times over the last year and that I've had several times over my 10 year career, which is, well, things didn't happen the way that I wanted them to happen. So what should we do? Should we shut them down? And as my dad used to say at the end of a construction day, Pack them up. No, no, no. Right. Because my life and my livelihood as an entrepreneur and as a business owner doesn't rely on other people showing up. I, I don't still get paid if 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 I don't get paid, essentially, especially at the beginning, if I don't do anything to get my business off the ground. So I can't rely on other people. And this is particularly true when you're just getting started out and you're putting videos out and you're not getting the reaction that you want to get on your videos or you're not getting the comments or you're not getting the views or you're not getting the likes. And now all of a sudden we think to ourselves, my Lord, they're not doing what I want them to do. <laughs> they're not opting in. They're not buying, right? Maybe this, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should quit to most people. That's a sign that stop. People are not doing what you want them to do. Stop. But in marketing, my friend, in marketing, if people are not now, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I'm stick with me here in marketing. If people are not doing what you want them to do, that's completely normal. Because marketing is about persuading people to do something that they maybe had not planned on doing. So I have to be the one who keeps showing up day after day, regardless of whether my audience is not or my customers or whoever is not doing what I want them to do. Now, in this situation this morning, I actually love when this happened. Somebody said we should have a standby list. It's not it's not it's not needed. It's not necessary. I'd rather if somebody doesn't show up, just jump on and say our 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 regular student guest was not able to make it today. And here's a prime example of a situation where you can either, or I could either say, well, you know what, let's just pack them up and not go live and not do anything and not have a contingency plan. Or we say, well, ready and prepared for that. And no problem. Here's what we're going to do anyways. And that contingency plan is something that I heard from another marketer uh, several years ago. And it was the plan that you do if the customer doesn't do what you want them to do. And that is marketing 101. If the customer or the, the follower out on TikTok or out on Instagram doesn't do what you want them to do, what's your contingency plan? Meaning that what are you going to do in the case that what you wanted to happen doesn't work out? What are you going to do? Well, as an affiliate marketer, the thing that you should do is keep marketing, post another video, right? No leads, no sales for two weeks, three weeks. I see some people saying months, et cetera. My friends, do you know how many people posted videos on YouTube back when YouTube started coming around before they actually made a single dime? I mean, I know we're stepping into this game in 2023 and it looks like easy money, but there is still an element of entrepreneurship. There's still an element of grit, of, of hustle, of contingency plans. The customer didn't do what I expected. Now, again, 
we go back to our employer. Now, we're used to that type of scenario. If we show up, but our employer doesn't show up, then usually we get paid and we all go home, right? That's that's It's different as a business owner. It's different. If, if you, here's what, ha, here's what you got to do as a business owner. Let's say that you have a restaurant. Okay. You open your restaurant grand opening, right? Tens of thousands of dollars worth of kitchen equipment and tables and staff in the building itself. And you're excited and you open the doors and nobody comes. Or say people come on your grand opening and get you all excited. But then the next day you realize, damn, those people are all just trying to support me. Nobody actually wants to spend money here. I don't have any customers. What do you do? Well, unfortunately, as a business owner, or as a restaurant owner, you kind of just got to wait there. Now you make it do some advertising, but you don't shut the doors. Because when that customer finally does pull up, they want to be able to open that door and walk in. So there's an element of even though the customer is not doing what you want them to do or the, you know, the show is the, the script, exactly what you want to happen is not happening. You still have to stay open and available and ready to serve and continue to market. And that's one of the, you know, that's one of the mind the mindset tweaks, the mindset pieces that we have to really get our, our our arms around here with this marketing pieces is that it's not a buddy system. It's not a, well, if my buddy over here is doing it, then I'm going to do it too. You know what I mean? And that's why I say we have to beware of comparisonitis. And you have to know also that while this can be we can cheer each other on as a team. You are a solo athlete, meaning that this is tennis. It's not baseball. Entrepreneurship is golf and tennis. It's not baseball, basketball, and football. When you start out as an entrepreneur, your ass is Andre Agassi or Rafael Nadal when he first got started out. You got a lot of potential, but you ain't won a damn thing yet. And you need to show up in order to showcase your skills. The other thing is, is if you don't show up on the court, you lose. It's not baseball or basketball where you've got other people that can go on to the court for you. That's the difference between entrepreneurship and at, at a company where I'm uh, maybe one of many people I can maybe get somebody to cover. If, I've, if I'm an employee at a restaurant, maybe I could call in somebody to cover my shift, et cetera, et cetera. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that's bad and entrepreneurship is good because we need our, our service workers, our healthcare workers, all these kind of situations. I'm just saying there's a difference. The mindset is different. When Joanne just let me know of a moment ago that the, 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 the guest wasn't showing up today, I didn't, oh my God, you know, are we going to shut down? What do we do? It was not even a question. Okay. I'm going live with or without. I'm, hey, I'm going live. I mean, it, I don't care. I don't even care if you people aren't here. I've been doing webinars to nobody for 10 years. Back when I got started in this business, we didn't even have lives. We had webinars, go to webinar. It was a software, and you, invited people on to the dang thing, just like you do with Zoom now. And then you go on and you present the webinar. And 10, 11, 12 years ago, when I was first getting started, I would host these webinars inside of my house, in my living room. I'll show you the damn picture right now. I was in my living room in a, you know, fairly tight house. And, um, and I told my wife, hey, I need it quiet in this house tonight because I'm going to be doing my very first webinar. You know, I'm going to be doing my very first webinar. I'm going to be inviting people on and I'm going to be doing my very first webinar and I'm going to need, I'm going to need some quiet. Okay. In this house for real, I'm coming up in here. Like, you know, I'm coming up in here like dad of the, what it, what was it back then? 2000s and eights, but I'm coming in here, laying it down saying, yo, I need it quiet in here. Okay, guess what happens? 
we start to do the the webinar. One minute goes by, two minutes go by, three minutes go by, five minutes. Nobody shows up. Ten, ten minutes go by. My, my wife walks out into the kitchen. She goes, everything okay? Everything's fine, babe. I didn't have the, 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 the humility to tell her. My pride was too big. And so I just went ahead and said, folks, we're going to go ahead and get this webinar started. We got a packed house tonight. And I said it loud so my wife could hear it. We got a packed house. And I delivered the damn webinar to nobody and the, did the whole thing and got practice. And that was what I think primed me to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to do this whether somebody's listening or not. And, and eventually, as I kept talking, kept marketing, kept trying, kept delivering value and not just delivering the same value, not just delivering the same thing. If it's not working and I've still been doing it for three months, I need to adjust. I need to adjust. This was back again, for those of you just coming on 12 years ago. Okay. Now, for those of you coming on and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, my guest didn't show up today. It's a regular student here of Legendary Marketer, just like we interview every single day. Real people, real students, not gurus, not Tony Robbins, not Oprah or whoever the hell else has been, you know, is some relatable people that are going through the dead gum course, just like you are. And they didn't show up. So what? The guy is in Australia. Who knows? Maybe he slept in. Maybe he had something come up. Maybe he had a situation. Maybe he had a health situation. Who knows? It doesn't matter. I wish him well, but for me, I got to take responsibility for what I'm doing. I got to take responsibility for the results that I get in my business. And this is how we create results. We don't wait for them. Marketing is about creating, manufacturing we're not manufacturing physical products. We're manufacturing a feeling. We're manufacturing trust and confidence. We're manufacturing somebody getting excited about maybe finally getting a solution to their problem. That's what we're creating and manufacturing. And a lot of times people think that, well, because I'm not manufacturing a physical product, then, well, what am I really doing here? No, Every video that you post, every time you go live, every email that you send is manufacturing trust. It's manufact. You should think of that every single time that you show up, even if your guests didn't show up, even if whatever. I mean, the whole world was burning around us for Christmas sakes in 2020. And I decided to go live every day for God's sakes. We didn't know what was going on. We thought for, you know, we're all going to die for God's sakes, I thought, you know? It's the end of the it's the end of the end. But thank God it wasn't. Because it, what I did was instead of thinking, well, it's the end of the end and who why even bother and world's blowing up anyway. I said, well shit, let's just go live every day and let people know that while the world is, you know, kind of burning down around us, we're actually still here. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're actually still open and in business and, and, and ready to serve you. And guess what that did? Almost three years of doing this show, it doesn't even matter. if I mean, at this point, it's just about, I'm really not in my underwear. My, my shorts are just riding up. I know when you, you scoot back, you're like, is this guy in his underwear for Christmas sakes? Maybe he really does work in his underwear. But we did the dang show, and now we've got almost 700 episodes. We we started doing this show. We started doing this show in the middle of a... Uh, actually, we started doing this show only days after they announced that we were going into a pandemic. We, we, we kind of sat around and said, gee whiz, you know? How can we inspire? How can we instill confidence? How can we let people know that we're still in business? And now look at that, that decision during when everybody else was freaking out or when everybody else was kind of paralyzed or not really knowing what to do or standing still or whatever, always be in the game, always be in the game. It doesn't matter what people are saying around you. It doesn't matter if people are saying something's working or not working anymore or anything. Always be in the game, testing and finding out for yourself. And that's what we did. We found out with this show when we started doing it back in the middle of the pandemic that, 
hey, you know what? People actually enjoy this. They'll show up. And now we've done almost 700 of them. Oh, my God. Somebody didn't show up. What are we going to do? Well, hey, we do what we did back in the day when we were just doing shows solo, right? The reason why I can do a solo show and I don't need to have somebody to talk to is because there was years before I started interviewing people that I was doing shows and videos and so forth on my own. And so I've already got the practice of, uh, you know, kind of speaking in, it, it, you know, to a camera and doing sort of like a live without an interview. Over the last couple of years, I've honed my interview skills. That's really what's gotten better. It's gotten that's gotten a lot better because I've I've interviewed people and learned how to have conversations instead of just, you know, marketers. Sometimes we tend to get in these where we only start talking at our audience, but it's 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 it's. It's all about no matter what everybody else is doing, I have to know what the hell I'm doing that day, regardless of what they're doing, regardless of what my guest, regardless of what my fellow um, you know, people in my industry are doing. This is going to be another thing that you have to pay attention to when there's a big trend or when people are all right now running in a certain direction towards things like artificial intelligence chat GPT, all this stuff. That's what everybody's doing right now. Well, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, everybody's going to be stupid in about a year because they're going to be relying on all these tools. We're going to show you how to use the tools, but not let the tools use you. Still teach you to, the skills because ultimately you are, you are the business. What The skills that you have the actions that you take as a marketer, as a marketing agency, or as a business or a product marketing yourself, it is all about the actions that you take, how many of those actions, how often you get in front of your audience in every single time that you do something. It's important, regardless of what other people around you are doing. That's the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful entrepreneur. It's, it's just that simple. So unsuccessful people who try to start businesses are unsuccessful because they're paying too much attention and changing their behaviors based on what other people are saying or doing. Successful people are successful because they do what they do and they take the actions that they take regardless of what other people around them think about it, feel about it, or whether they're falling in line or doing what that person wants them to do. That's called leadership. And there is an element of leadership to entrepreneurship. You have to take the bull by the horns. It is your call. It is your decision. You are the CEO. And that's important to touch on as well. CEO mindset. The buck stops with you. You have to make the decision. And this is an important distinction between especially when you're going through training between who's responsible for your success. Right. Even when you have a coach, even when you hire mentors, even when you're in a learning community like this, it is still your responsibility the same way that it's going to be when you are operating your business for you to make the decision about what you're going to do, not wait and rely on somebody else to tell you what to do. I know that's like, well, I paid you for the coaching. Aren't you supposed to tell me exactly what to do? Yes, we, we have videos and we have as much as we can reasonably do, but there is a time every minute of every day, right? Where you're sitting in front of the computer and you ultimately have to make the decision about what you're going to do with that information. And that's what I'm talking about. You have to decide if that information is appropriate for you at that time or whether you need to you know, slow down and maybe just focus on this instead of, right? You have to make those calculated decisions. Entrepreneur training and education is different than factory worker training and education. Factory worker training and education is going to train you how to take orders. Entrepreneurship education is going to show you how to give orders. And many of you are unfamiliar with that. You're unfamiliar with giving others orders, but you're also unfamiliar with giving yourself an order. And that's sometimes or all the time what this game is about. You need to be able to call the shot and give yourself an order. That's that CEO mindset.
You have to be willing to make the decision. You have to be willing to make the shot, uh, make the call about what needs to be done or take the shot, right? That's what it's all about, right? So I like to look at some of these old pictures to remember some of the decisions that I had to make along the way in order to get to where I'm at today and realize that it was a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of these moments, a lot of these moments to where a lot of people around me were, were, were stopping. Uh, they, a lot of people around me, like right now, you kind of have a class right now of people that you're, you're starting this whole journey with, right? There's a lot of people that you're, that are, that are successful right now, or that you've made friends with or saw their names on the internet as you've been doing this here the last couple of days, weeks, or months, um, or years. And what will happen is a lot of those people over the years will disappear. Ah, I know Dad's, Dave's bringing some, some doom and gloom here. No, I'm bringing some reality, right? I can tell you that a lot of the people that were in my class that I knew when I was first starting uh, in, in online marketing and online business 12-ish years ago, many of them are not around. Not all of them, not... Uh, not even most of them. I mean, there's a lot of people who are still doing it, but a lot of them are not around. And so you're going to have to be able to keep moving independently, regardless of even what some of the people that you feel like you're doing this with, right? You can't let other people determine what you do, how excited you are about something. That's another thing. We allow, we ask people their opinions of things and we allow them to inform our eyes and our ears with their opinions. They start telling us their opinion about this, start telling us their opinion about that. We could have been successful with that strategy if we would have just locked into it and got started with it when we were feeling excited about it and took that excitement and just poured it in. But instead, we started asking everybody's opinion and they peed on our parade. And we let them, we asked them to. We said, hey, I don't know if you got to take a whiz or not, but I got a parade for you to come over and pee on. Want to come over and like do that for me? That's what we do. Because 99.9% .9 of people we know are not going to come in and just give us positive, you know, want raving uh, in, in encouragement. You know, somebody's mad about their life. They're mad about how broke they are. They're mad about, and now you're talking about doing better in your life. You think that people are going to give you you know, no. So I'm I'm asking them to pee on my parade. As the CEO, I got to not care what they think. Now, I'm not talking about with family and spouses. Obviously, we need to we need to coexist with these people. OK, we can't get into entrepreneurship and then just say, oh, screw my family. They don't support me. Right. That's not the mark of a successful person. The mark of a successful person is how do you integrate all these pieces together and become the leader of your life? Right? How do you become the leader of your life? How do you become somebody who's not getting knocked around in your life and business like a pinball because everybody's giving you their opinions and they're not doing what you want them to do and so you're ready to give up? That's exhausting. That feels like you're a ball in a pinball machine. You have to know where you're going and what you're doing and have a vision for yourself and your business. You have to do that. Dave Sharp can't do that for you. Joanne, Ryan, Drew, Julie, your BPA, your, your bro, your mom, your dad. Nobody can have a vision for you. You got to have that vision for you. You got to know where you're going, what you want, right? And when you sit down from somebody, this is always true, and you have more passion and confidence and conviction about what you're doing than they have about what they're doing or saying, then you'll get up and with your, you know, your dignity intact. But you got to be convicted about what you're doing. You got to be passionate about what you're doing. You got to be sure about what you're doing. You got to be confident about what you're doing. You have to build an actual, you know, almost like a protective uh, armor around your dreams and your time and your vision. Because otherwise, if somebody doesn't show up to an interview, now all of a sudden you're thrown off for the day. Or if a family member tells you that they think what you're doing is a scam. Oh, my God. Now Aunt, jo Aunt Betty thinks I'm scamming out here. Uh, I don't know how to go on with life. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, God. You know, 
we, we can't be that pinball. You have to be able to create results, not wait on them. And how you create results is quite frankly, you push through all of this stuff and be so focused on what you're doing, kind of like this morning. Schedule your success. One of the great ways that I've gotten ahead with just executing on things and not worrying about what people think about them is to have it scheduled. So for example, we started doing this Wake Up Legendary back a few years ago. Well, we scheduled the damn thing for 10 a.m. five days a week. I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't get out of it, even if I wanted to. I mean, I finally maneuvered around and got a day off on Wednesday, but I mean, you know, we love when Joanne comes on, right? L l softer, not as much yelling. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we scheduled our success, and that helps, you know. I think one of the reasons things that's helped me so much, and I'll wrap up with this because it is Friday after all, and we'll have class dismiss a little bit early this morning so you all can go out and, you know, uh, you all can go out and, and schedule some success for Christmas sakes. But um, a lot of things in my life are scheduled. Uh, a lot of things in my life are predictable. For example, what I'm going to wear every day. I've already got that picked out. My choice is white or black shirt, basically. And I look down at the floor to see which one is less wrinkled. And then I, I've been picking that one up lately. The less wrinkled one, of course. <laughs> I don't know, though. I mean, this thing is pretty pretty bad. Um, so I wear the same, same thing every day. I eat similar things every day. You know, I've got a... I've got a, a um, I've got a restaurant that has food that I like, and, and usually I'll order that one or two of the items off of that menu from Uber Eats if I'm going to order out. Or I have, uh, as I've shared with some of you before, my wife and I recently hired a chef, and uh, this was something we, we should have done a long time ago. It's been a great, a great pleasure, but I'll bring some leftovers to eat, you know, to, to, to lunch, uh, to eat at, at, the, at the office house. So I'm eating the same thing. What, why, why am I doing that? Because I'm not going in wasting a bunch of energy trying to make these decisions about whether I'm going to wear a shirt today or not, what I'm going to wear, whether I'm going to eat today or not, what I'm going to eat. It's already, I already know, right? I already know. Okay, same thing. My routine every morning is the same, and my wife's pretty schedule and routine oriented. So everything, I don't have to think about it. This is my point. Most of us get in trouble because nothing's scheduled and we're just living our life. In, but most of all, we're building our business. Forget life. We're building our business by the seat of our pants. Nothing's scheduled. So when it comes time to actually execute on the task, it's not really scheduled. I don't have any accountability between me and my calendar for that task. And it's easy for me to talk myself out of it. So that's another way to just create results. It's already scheduled. Look, I know I'm going to go live at least for the next 90 days. Here, I'm going to give you all an idea. Instead of thinking that you got to go live for the rest of your life, for those of you who have been thinking about going live, I would invite you to say, I'm going to go live for the first season of my show, and that's going to be either 30, 60, or 90 days. So I'm not going to commit to the next 12 months. I'm not going to commit to the next, you know, this is a problem that a lot of alcoholics have too when they come into recovery or addicts. It's like, do, do you mean I can never have a sip of alcohol for the rest of my life in what people learn in recovery? No, just don't do it for today, bud. Deal with tomorrow when tomorrow comes, just for today. And it's a great principle, right? So what if we borrowed that same principle and said, just, just for the next 90 days, you're going to schedule your success? Because I want to bring this in for a landing and make this practical for you. What if for the next 90 days you said, I'm going to schedule my success. Every single thing in my business is going to be routine, scheduled, redundant, and I'm just going to execute, execute, execute. I'm not going to try to be cute or creative. I'm not going to, as my dad used to say when I was playing sports and wanted to bat like Ken Griffey Jr., he'd say, stop hot dogging. We don't have to hot dog. We don't have to hot dog. We don't have to be cute. We don't have to be creative just for the next 90 days commit to going live at the same time or commit to posting a video at the same time. Now, I don't care if you end up posting five other videos that day, but commit to something. 
Schedule it. Schedule your success. Create it. Don't wait on it. Now, what if you end up doing a show or you're interviewing people and they don't show up? The show must go on. You don't cancel. You don't cancel. You just do it. Nothing stops you. There's no rain outs on the internet, folks. It's not raining, hailing, sleeting, or snowing. As long as you got Wi-Fi, baby. As long as you got Wi-Fi, you're in business. Okay, you're in business. I don't even care if you don't even have your funnels and all this and that all set up perfectly, and you never will anyway, so just get them set up. But I'm going to just do it. Just go. Just execute. Rego just, just remember people are not going to do what you want them to do. Remember that if you're on a uh, on a live and you give a call to action for them to go click on your link to get your ebook or whatever you're giving away, they ain't going to do it on the first time. They ain't going to do it on the second time. They ain't going to do it on the fifth time. You're going to have to keep reiterating that call to action over and over and over again because that's what marketing is. It's re it's contingency plan after contingency plan after contingency plan, which just means, okay, they're not doing what I want them to do. What do I do now? <laughs> That's all marketing is. They're not doing what I want them to do. What do I do now? Okay, right? Well, I'm going to go live tomorrow again. That's what I'm going to do. It's already scheduled. See, this way I don't have to think about it. And guess what happens after seven, nearly 700 interviews and me even showing up when a guest is not available? Guess what our customers here at Legendary start to believe? These folks are pretty serious about this stuff. Maybe I should part with a little skin in the game and learn some of these skills. That's what they start to think. And that's the power of creating success, scheduling your results, doing it whether people show up, doing it whether people uh, uh, you know, click on your link, doing it whether they buy your stuff, right? If people are not buying your stuff, is does that mean, well, okay, I'll just go crawl in a hole now? No, it means, hey, need to reapproach, need to take a new angle. I mean, come on, people. Let's talk, let's lay some topics out in the comments of some things that you you and I both know you're relentless about, okay? It, 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 we all got them. We don't give up easy. So don't give up easy now, right? Don't give up easy now. Don't give up that easy. Schedule your success and know that at the end of the day, regardless of whether people show up, you show up. That's the most important part. That's what people are waiting for anyways. My friends, thank you for being on. I see all your your I see all your comments. I do. I don't I don't I'm not able to read every single one as I'm I'm doing the show, but they're here and a lot of times I'm able to read them as I'm doing the show and a lot of times I go back and review them again. Thanks for being here and thanks for being so engaged and thanks for talking back to me and not making it feel like I'm just talking at you or we're just talking at you. Um, it's such a cool feeling knowing that hundreds of us are sitting all together in our various cars or offices or desks at work and listening in to these strategies, trying to get better, trying to create results in our life. And we're here to support you every step of the way. So with that said, we're going to get out of here, cut the show short because, hey, what the heck? I mean, I could rant for another half hour, but I think I've said what I need to say. And we'll definitely be back here on Monday for another episode. We'll see you in the trainings later today if you're a Blueprints member. And if not, well, we'll see you back here on Wake Up Legendary for another episode. Peace.